Hello, in this video we're going to look at the constant elasticity of substitution utility function in order to derive the indirect utility function and the expenditure function. So here is a constant elasticity of substitution utility function. The first thing we're going to do is get the marginal utility of good x and good y from it. So we're going to take the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good x and uh, a few steps involved here. First I bring down the 2 in front. That's where this 2 is coming from. And then in the exponent here, 2 minus 1. I have that over here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of x to the 1 half. And that is going to be the result that is in front of the brackets here. So I bring down the 1 half in front from this x. And then x raised to the 1 half power minus 1 leaves us x raised to the minus one-half power. The, so uh, just simplifying here, uh, two times one-half is just one, so we get this result for the marge utility of good x. The marge utility good y, taking the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good y, we get a similar result, bringing the two down in front, taking the derivative of y to the one-half, uh, pulling that out here in front of the brackets, we get this, a little simplification. We got the marginal utility of good y. The next step, we'll set up the utility maximizing condition, where we're going to take the marginal utility of good x and divide it by the price of good x and do a similar thing for the marginal utility of good y and the price of good y. So substituting in from our last screen the marginal utility of good x and the marginal utility of good y and dividing it by the price of good x and price of good y. Uh, now we're just going to simplify. We're going to solve this for x and y. Um, so first let's get rid of the brackets here. So if we divide through by what's in the brackets, we'll get this nice simplification. Following uh, the rules of exponents, I will move this x to the minus one-half down into the denominator, and this y to the minus one-half power also down into the denominator. And then I also multiplied through by the price of good x. So doing those things gives us this. And then finally multiplying through by y to the one-half power, and then multiplying both sides through by x to the one-half power. We're left with this expression. Now we'll just square both sides. So after squaring both sides, we get y equals the following. And I'm going to call this equation 1. I will also solve for equation 2. And so equation 2 is just going to be equation 1 solved for x. Okay, So I take the equation 1 and I solve it for x and we get the following. The next step is we're going to plug equation 1 into the budget constraint and then solve for good x. Here's the consumer's budget constraint. M is income. We got the price of good x times units of x. Price of good y times units of good y. So making our substitution in where I see a y, I am going to plug in this result up here. And now we'll do a little simplification. PY divided by PY squared just leaves us with PY down here in the denominator. Um, on the right hand side I'll factor out an X term. So after factoring out an X term we have this. And then finally we have what is essentially it or it is it's the demand for good X and I got the demand for good X by just solving for X just dividing everything through by what's in parentheses here it leaves us with the demand for good x. Okay, moving on. Going back to equation 2, we're going to plug this equation 2 now into the budget constraint and then solve for good y. So once again, we've got the budget constraint. Where I see x, I'll plug in equation 2. So doing that. Some simplification once again. The price of good x divided by the price of good x squared just leaves us with the price of good x. Factoring out a y term on the right-hand side. 
and then dividing everything through by what's in parentheses, we get the demand for good y. The next step is we're going to plug the demand for good x and the demand for good y into the utility function. Here again is our CES utility function, constant elasticity of substitution utility function. For, good at, for x and y here, I'm going to be plugging in the respective demand equations. Demand for good x, once again, is given by the following. The demand for good y is given by the following. So plugging those equations into our utility function, we get this result. And this is our indirect utility function. All right, so there's our indirect utility function. Not too bad. Step two is to find the expenditure function, which is the inverse of the indirect utility function. So we're going to solve the indirect utility function for income, or M. M represents the consumer's income. Here, once again, is the indirect utility function. We're going to now solve this for M. So the first thing I did was I took the square root of both sides. Okay, so took the, taking the square root of both sides, this 2 disappears, and we got utility raised to the power of 1 half. Uh, the next step here, I'm going to pull out of brackets the square root of m. Okay, so I'm going to pull out the, the square root of m so we can do that. Uh, the next step is I am going to divide through by everything um, in the brackets here, which essentially will give us this result here, um, m to the one-half power equals utility to the one-half power multiplied by the reciprocal of what's in brackets in this earlier step. So we get this. And then the final step, I'm just going to square both sides. So after squaring both sides, we have the expenditure function. So this gives us the minimum expenditure necessary to, to achieve any given level of utility, U, at prices Px and Py. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.